In this video, I'm going to teach you how to practice Chopin's Etude, Opus 10, Number 4, in C sharp minor. C sharp minor is like this. So this etude is a study on scales, chords, and arpeggios. We're going to start by defining and showing you what movements do we do when we play scales. If we have a five finger pattern from C to G, we have this. And I could say that if you keep all the fingers with the same length and you do a rotation movement from C to G, they all come evenly with no problems. Okay, so starting on G, you could go in a little bit and then out, in. And this way also like this. Then you add a rotation movement. So now, knowing that, it's going to allow you to start working on the first part of the etude because what we're going to do is raise each note. We're going to make it sharp. So we're going to play C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. And we'll have this. And what the piece does is make it minor. So what we'll do is we put an E instead of F. We lower E a half step, the third. And that's how the cheat begins. Know that you should go from here to here in one and use one rotation. And then what he does is add the octave. I could say that on the octave we're going to go down and then up. And then there's another octave here. If you have both hands, that will be the beginning. So it's a down here and then up to go to C sharp. If we add the rotation with the scale, now, if you're going to do it quicker, just remember what we discussed at the beginning of the video. And that's how you get the entrance. Some people like to do it loud and then soft. Some people like to do it loud and the second note. Okay, it's totally up to you what you decide to do. And also keep in mind what we discussed at the beginning, the scale. Then it's going to develop the scale. So the first pattern has one difficulty, which is you have to go until then. You have to always do. And then here's going to change the movement. So what we have now is this if you play slow. First technique dealing with the scale and a chord with it going down using the arm weight to play loud and when you go up you play this note you get here and then you start same rotation on the right hand now go back and forth now very important that you practice like that actually let's say and try to play as brilliant as you can articulate each finger and then there is a change of difficulty arpeggios now so we have an accent on C we go here Chopin wrote very nicely this accent on C so those help because you're gonna go down. Let's say if you wear chords, you will play them like this. So then down, you 
rotate towards G sharp, rotate here and back. Rotate. Always go down on G sharp. And then we get to C sharp. So the G sharp here in the middle, the second note, sometimes it helps us a pivot. That helps to hold a little extra on it. We keep wrote bum, 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 those accents, but also on the uh, middle part of the uh, hand. It's interesting sometimes. It's very difficult to bring it out, but okay. So try to bring those out. Left hand for the most part. So it's just a stretch. So what we do is we rotate from the lowest note, chords, and then C sharp. Together now. So you could give an accent like he wrote it on C sharp and a little bit on the first note, on the G sharp. With that, we resolve the scales. We resolve the rotations, different rotations within the scale. And then we have their pages here. Very simple here. We have and the theme repeats again. Okay, it's gonna go to a different key. But to get the speed, try to have very loose wrist, and then we rotate also here. So it's true that many times. And this a series of videos, I exaggerate the rotation at first, but then it gets smaller. And you play it faster. And then it gets to another key, which is gonna be D sharp minor. Now we're relating to this D sharp minor. You look at the notes. And it goes through the entire scale. But now it changes to exercise and do the work with the left hand. Same thing from before. Accent. Add the right hand. That's the equivalent to this. Now, change of key. D sharp minor. It's important to know that. So, yeah. Chords. It's important that you do those accents. So, for Sando here, piano. gonna go to another key it's gonna go back to the uh, C sharp minor from the beginning a little tricky this part you have to the first note that's one group so I will take it in group so At the end, we have the again the so if we do it now, and then it starts over with the same difficulty. I think the most important uh, exercise that we should do is when we practice fast and loud. So, one. Um...
one, one. So the same thing for the holiday, you'd emphasize every four notes, sometimes you could do every two notes, it doesn't really matter, the important thing is you are working on it. Now after you get this, you could start trying to manage how to play it fast. So you could practice like this, slow and fast. articulate it. Make sure that you don't play kind of no, so very articulated. The opposite also is very valuable if you do it. That means starting quick already. Every four notes. And then maybe measure, take a moment of rest. So that means you could play this. This is to manage so you don't get tense. Practice to there. And then from here. That's very valuable. I think to manage the uh, tension, we could practice in this way and I encourage you to try it. It's the best exercise, I think. So you practice all the way here. So it's like, then from there. I think it's very important that to manage tension, you make a little group. That means you group the passages into different difficulties. I take a little moment. I'm gonna exaggerate so you can see it. I'm rotating. Now here I'm gonna take a little moment. And also here. Moment. moment to start a new rotation moment here another passage and then it starts over so that's I think is uh, very valuable to do it if I try to do it fast let's say I go on until two measures now and I'll make the pause when I get here. So let's try it. Here I make a pause and play the other passage. Pause again. And then I'll do the same thing with the left hand. It's very important to, when you start playing more musical, to loud and get there, then piano. Crescendo, arpeggios, back to loud, piano, and then going back. I hope this video was helpful and if you enjoyed, uh, subscribe and like it. Thank you very much.